Welcome back. This is still Breakfast Daily. And of course, the show is interactive. Use the hashtag Breakfast Daily across all social media platforms. And if you need to send us a WhatsApp message, 0550-585-832. And definitely, if you're texting us from beyond the shores of Ghana, use the country code plus 233. Now, it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. The month of October is commemorated as Pink October all over the world. And it's been like that for a while now. Now, it wouldn't be Breast Cancer Awareness Month here at City TV if we didn't speak to someone who has survived and braved the odds when it comes to breast cancer. So we'll be speaking very shortly to Madam Dorothy Amwa, who is a survivor of breast cancer. But before that, let's take a look at a report that was filed last year, just around this time, Pink October, by our colleague from the City News Desk, Akusia Autry. Now, she did a report about a young girl who was battling with breast cancer. And our guest for today, our survivor, was one of the people together with her team who came to this young lady's aid. Many stories have been told around the world of persons who are enduring the reality of a deformity because of the effects of breast cancer. One which has caught my attention is an 18-year-old mother of a two-year-old son living with breast cancer. Years ago, Anita noticed a small growth on her breast. Little did she anticipate the kind of pain and anguish this will bring her some few years on. The gradual advancement of the lump in her breast is what she can no longer control. I didn't know that it's something serious. So the time I get to hospital, and they told me that it's a breast cancer. But I had breast cancer before, but I never knew it would be. So the time they told me that it's a breast cancer, I said it will I think there's no hope for me again. She just doesn't have to suffer the pain, but suffer the consequences as she faces stigmatization from her peers. Sometimes, yeah, heavy mommy, pa, weird mommy. Sometimes, weird mommy, pa. Madame, for a bit more cry, this year cry, I'm gonna cast me because I'm gonna miss her. Yali we, yali biya. There is no hope for me. I said, I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm going to go to the family of 18-year-old Anita have had a tough time ever since they received the news of her unfortunate condition. I didn't buy a normal friend, Papa no Bona Man, so Nina on cash in from one background funny near me, she say. I call an end and I call an end, let me So actually, a friend found um, her story somewhere and called me immediately, knowing that this is the kind of work we do with Dorothy's Hope. She contacted me immediately and um, I, I saw her situation and I didn't waste any time at all. I immediately contacted her family and asked that they bring her to Accra. Um, we have better health facilities here and you know, doctors here to attend to her. Obviously, whatever treatment that she had attempted to do wherever she was hadn't, had failed. That's why the disease has progressed to the stage. I visited the Kolibu Teaching Hospital in Accra, specifically the surgical block. Dr. Josephine Insafo is an oncologist. She assesses the intensity of Anita's breasts and tells me that urgent attention is needed to prevent the loss of life. She says the affected breast needs to be operated on to arrest the situation. The stage 4 cancer unfortunately is not curable. It's reached the other lungs. It's going to cause problems with your breathing, with your liver, and eventually that is what will take the patient. Looking at the breast, obviously, is locally advanced. 
obviously is locally advanced. That's a stage three. But we need to do scans and CTs and lab tests to see that uh, how far it's, it's reached. Is it in the other organs or not? Uh -huh. So in answer as is there hope, you know, even in stage four, there is some hope. There is something that can be done, even if you're not talking about a kill. So certainly we can uh, make her much better. And if we didn't treat at all, the disease would just get out of hand pretty quickly. Being the first of six children, young Anita says she's positive that the future is bright for her. She talks of her ambitions and says she aspires to be a journalist someday. <laughs> I'm a co-squa, I'm a co-SS, I'm a VHS and I'm a waiting. 18-year-old Anita with this condition is appealing to the public to support her to overcome this journey. For City News, my name is Akosia Ochre. And that was a report filed last year, just around this time, October 2021, by Akusia Autry of the City News Desk. And I have here in the studio with me a woman who I admire so much. I mean, I admire her in business and all that she's achieved, but also admire her tenacity in just rising above the challenges that have come to her in life, particularly where breast cancer is concerned. She's a true survivor in every sense of the word. And I'm pleased to introduce Dorothy Amwa. Good morning, Dorothy. Good morning. How are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you? Very well. Thank you for having me. Yes, thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. Now, the first time I encountered you and everything you do, you had, I mean, you're an optician. I am. And, and you've been for over 20 years. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you had an establishment at the Mervyn Pick Hotel in you Accra. Remember? Yes. Mm -hmm. Chic Optique. Yes. You know, and very beautifully done, brought a lot of professionalism and you know, and class to the mm -hmm. space mm -hmm. you know and it was great to see a woman leading the effort mm -hmm. as well um, you're into Decker and CEO of black carpets events you do so many things yes. you know an educated woman mm -hmm. but then you had to deal with breast cancer a mother of two yes as well you are yes and your businesses are not just in Ghana but also in the US mm -hmm. When were you diagnosed with breast cancer and how did you, in that moment, you know, deal with the immediate news mm -hmm. and then going forward, what was the journey like to surviving and being here today? Right. Well, um, in my case, um, I was diagnosed at quite a young age, um, no family history, so there was really no need for me to go for regular checkups. I was 29 when it first happened to me, I was first diagnosed. Um, I was in the U United States at the time. Um, so just basically, um, though I'd heard about cancer and breast cancer, it wasn't in my space. Yeah. So, you know, um, when I found a lump um, in my left breast, um, initially I thought perhaps it's a cyst. In fact, all my family members thought, oh, maybe it's a cyst, nothing more. Mm -hmm. So I went in immediately and um, had a, um, saw a doctor and um, they did a needle biopsy, which is oh. where they place a needle into the breast tissue take a small sample out and then they test it to see whether it's cancer or whether it's benign. And, um, you know, after th two, three days after the test was performed, I was called to come in for a consultation and that's when I was told that the cells were malignant, basically meaning it's cancer. Yeah, so, um, so at that point, you know, what do you do? You know, you're hit with uh, this news and um, I was relatively young and, you know, quite confused. Um, but then I took it upon myself to do a lot of research about the disease which I believe every woman should if you, if you are diagnosed. Um, so I did a lot of research and um, eventually um, the decision was made that I'd have to have you know, radical surgery. Um, there are various options available to you and um, it's just, um, you just have to be well informed and, and t so that you take the right decision. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, after, um, after that I had a whole host of tests done. Bone tests, you know, they scanned me, um, a lot of x-rays, a lot of bone marrow tests, etc and um, to see whether the cancer had spread elsewhere. Um, um, the decision was pretty much made for me because for me, I was stage three, basically meaning that the cancer was um, um, a certain size, the lump was a certain size, and also po the possibility of it having spread somewhere else into the body. Um, so um, 
Thereafter, I went in and um, opted for a mastectomy. Um, there are various options available to you, know, to you. You can have a lumpectomy, which is where the doctors go in and remove the lump. Mm -hmm. Um, and then sometimes that is followed by treat various treatment options such as radiotherapy or chemotherapy. Um, for me, I went for the mastectomy simply okay. because some of the um, cancer cells were found in my in my lymph um, my, sorry in my milk ducts. Mm -hmm. Okay, so saving the breast would have been very difficult to do, and the chances of you know, of the cancer, even one single cancer cell being left in the body is very high. Mm -hmm. They couldn't clear the margins, so they decided to do the mastectomy. And the mastectomy basically is when you have to have the breast... Complete removal of the concept. breast, yes. Was it just one or both? Just the one. Just the one. Just the one, yes. Mm -hmm. um, but being in that part of the world, there are other options available to you after the surgery. So I had the surgery and then I had reconstruction. I met with plastic surgeons and had reconstruction. The whole process took about 17 good hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, um, and after that, um, I was advised to go ahead and have chemotherapy um, because during the surgical procedure, procedure they went in, um, into my armpit and removed some of my, um, my lymph nodes mm. for testing and some of my lymph nodes were positive with the mm. cancer cells. Mm. So that meant that I, um, it probably had gone somewhere into the body. So it had spread from the breast? Well, it, there, was no, there was no real indication that it spread, but the chances that it was floating somewhere else and the body was there. Yeah. So that's why I had the chemotherapy. And what chemo is, for those of you who don't know, is that um, basically it's um, an intravenous medication that is pumped into your, your body and it bombards your entire body with, um, with, you know, with this medication that in the hope to kill any cancer cell that is, that is there. Yeah. yeah. So I had six months of chemotherapy yeah. after that. So how, how does the chemo work? Is it that every day something is injected into your veins or mm. is it every other day? How does it work? It depends on your treatment mm. regimen. It really depends on your, your situation. Okay. Uh, for me, it was um, every other week, mm. yeah, for a period of time. Is it painful? Yes. It's... Um, <laughs> or uncomfortable? It is uncomfortable, um, but um, depending on the drugs that you're on and also your, your body, some people react differently to it. Yes. For me, I was actually okay through the process. Mm. Um, I felt a little sick and nause you know, nausea and you know, all of that and very weak right after the treatment. But the next day I bounced right back and I was, well, in fact, I worked through the entire you know, six months. I made sure I went to work to keep myself sane. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So I was about to, that was my <laughs> next question. Yeah. How did you just maintain your, your sanity, you mm -hmm. know, your mental health? How did you take care of that? And you just mentioned that you worked through it. Mm -hmm. I guess your work was a distraction. It was yeah. a good distraction. I mean, it really was um, at a good time in my life. I was thriving. My businesses were thriving in the United States and New York. And um, I had a lot to live for. Um, I also hadn't had children yet, so you know that was also a motivation for me, and I needed, you know, I wanted to have kids. So even though they told me to freeze my eggs before the treatment yeah. because the chances of me having kids would be, you know, would be reduced because of the chemo and all of that of the treatments, I opted not to do that. I took yeah. my chances. So after the surgery and after the chemo, I decided to cleanse my entire system because your body is totally, your immune system is totally destroyed at that point. Because mm -hmm. in order to kill the cancer cells, they also have to bombard all your good cells. Exactly. So I became, you know, so my, my immune system was very, very weak. So then I took it upon myself, once again, do a little, little bit of research, take vitamins, herbs, whatever I needed to take to make sure that I, you know, strengthen my immune system again. And um, I was offered other treatment options, but I opted not to take that. That's me personally. Mm -hmm. For some people, they go ahead and take other drugs, tamoxifen, other, other drugs for a longer period. But I felt like I was fine mm -hmm. and I could battle this. Fast yes. forward, mm -hmm. I mean, you're in Ghana and you right. have a foundation mm -hmm. and we saw a report a little while ago. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you've helped so many people who mm -hmm. are battling with breast cancer. Mm -hmm. How did you get to that point where you had healed to the point, maybe not mm -hmm. fully, I and mean, you'd have mm -hmm. to tell us, but mm -hmm. healed to the point where you could now look beyond your own situation and mm -hmm. say, I need to help other people who are going through this. Well, I think, you know, we all ask, when we're all faced with such situations, we all ask ourselves, why me? You know, but to me, it was, why not me? Mm -hmm. You know, why, why someone else? And so then you start wondering what your purpose is in life. You know, maybe the, this happened to me for a reason. Mm -hmm. Maybe I was meant to reach out to other people, educate people about this disease and, you know, encourage and motivate people who are going through it. Um, and I think I really believe that's my calling, even though I do other things, you know, work wise. But um, um, nine years ago when my father passed, I, I felt the need to give back to society and, you know, to do something. And that's when I embarked on Dorothy's Hope Foundation and founded it. And um, 
you know, throughout the years, I'd been encountering lots of women with a disease and, you know, and I think I, I, I'm a source of inspiration for them to let them know that I'm living testimony and basically that I, can, I survived the disease. And if I can survive the disease, the disease so can you. Yeah. Um, very often we think that um, having breast cancer is an, auto, an autom automatic death sentence, where it isn't. Um, it's possible to survive it and it can be survived so long as it's caught early enough. And in this part of the world, I find that um, over 70% of women who come in with breast cancer, um, you know, actually they come into, they go into hospitals and doctors, see doctors at a very, very late stage. Mm. And that is the big challenge that we face here in Ghana. Um, so it's not a problem necessarily with our, our system, it's just people are not getting screened or, or, or finding People are not going in for enough. screening, um, there's no preventative, um, you know, there's no preventative health care. Um, they, they wait till it's very late and also the stigma. I must mention, that's the big thing. The whole stigma associated with disease and especially cancer, um, you know, that it's some type of a bad omen or, you know, something that's on your family or, you know, or, you know that, that sort of, you know, stigmatization. So I think we need to move away from that and it's, we can only do that through education. Um, and basically, um, you know, it's nothing that you've done wrong. It's just a disease. It's a simple non-communicable disease that has affected you. And it can be cured if it's caught early enough. Okay. Yeah. So Dorothy, it's, it's 2022. Mm. We're back here again, mm. October, pink <laughs> October. What do you want to tell people? And uh, indeed, men can be diagnosed Men can also be diagnosed with breast well. cancer. And there are, mm. the, there are men who, even here in Ghana, who have been diagnosed with breast cancer. And I must add to this, that men, you should know that um, if you are diagnosed with breast cancer, it can kill you faster than it can kill a woman. Mm. Simply because they don't have as much breast tissue and it can penetrate the walls, the, you know, the chest walls a lot sooner and move into other parts of the body. And um, so it's very important also that men also check themselves. So there's a lot of, um, in the month of October, there's a lot of uh, free services out there, a lot of organizations, hospitals that offer free breast screenings. So everybody should really try to take advantage of that. Wonderful. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Dorothy, thank you. How can people get in touch with you with the foundation? I mean, if we, I mean, know anybody who's battling mm -hmm. breast cancer or if you just need help, you need a shoulder to cry on, Dorothy's there. Yes, <laughs> is that yes. it for many? How can we get yes, in touch yes, with you? Yes, yes. Um, Dorothy's Hope Foundation is on all, all social, social media platforms. Um, Instagram, Dorothy, Dorothy's under, underscore hope. Um, Facebook, Dorothy's Hope Foundation. Um, we're all there. We're all over, you know, the internet. So feel free to give us a call, and um, you can also reach me on zero two zero three seven one nine six nine seven. Zero two zero zero three seven one nine six nine seven. Wonderful. Yes, Dorothy. Thank you. But we you have so a long much. way to go. We have a lot of work to do. Clearly, <laughs> clearly, and thank you, thank yeah. you for doing at least your. It's a big chunk, mm. but it's still a little bit. Mm. We have a lot to do. Thank yes. you so much, Dorothy. Thank you so much. Thank you. I've been speaking to Dorothy Amwa. She is, of course, a breast cancer survivor, but she's many other things, an astute businesswoman, and for me, um, you know, a, a true heroine in every sense. She's giving back to society by helping other people, women, men, who are also battling breast cancer. And it's especially important to highlight people like her and share their experiences in the month of October, Pink October. Now, I'll have you know that The Hairdressers, episode 10, comes on tonight at 7.30 p.m. Okay, so make sure that you, you tune in, catch all the fun and excitement in The Hairdresser Salon. And then, of course, um, the Menchia Palace will be buzzing today, buzzing and bustling, because there'll be a press conference by the Otumfo, and I'm reliably, reliably informed that it's very likely that the president may also be there. He is going to the Ashanti region. Um, we've been talking about...